Why do people buy an audio system? Why do people buy a recording? Why do they bother to put it on? Because they're hoping that maybe someday, if the, the, a sound will come out of that speaker, they will make them feel the way you felt when you played that duet. Feeling of joy and getting lost in the music. Enjoy making beautiful things, which enhance the love of music. I started playing the trumpet when I was 12, and fell in love with jazz, and wanted to be a musician. My early years were spent in Boston, which was a great place for jazz. That was the beginnings of the Berklee School of Music, and. Um, all the great players would come to Boston and play at the Jazz Workshop or at Connolly's. I had, the, I had the great good fortune of being able to listen to and, and then later on to actually sit in with some of the great jazz artists like Sonny Rollins and John Coltrane. I used to record my teachers and friends and when I played the tapes back the sound that came out of the speakers wasn't much like what we played it, and I thought, wait a minute, how come it doesn't, we played it and it sounded like that, we play it back, it doesn't sound anything like it, maybe we can close the gap. I was studying Indian music with Ali Akbar Khan, yes. and I, I wanted to go to India to study, yes. but we found out it was a lot cheaper to go to Switzerland and come back to New York, and then take a flight to India from there. I flew to Switzerland, and while I was at the Stolovox factory, I kind of had a, a life crisis. Um, I saw this little factory making the most beautiful audio products, founded by a very spiritual man. I mean, Georges Calais is the most spiritual humanist, a deep soul, and a brilliant inventor. And it was, I was just inspired by that, and I, so it touched me so deeply that I decided to go back to Connecticut and start a company to do something like that, because I realized that there was more than one way to serve music. The first preamplifier that I made in any quantity was called the LNP2. Yes. Our first customer was Jack Webb. Jack Webb was the, the famous actor in a television program called Dragnet. And uh, uh, I, I took the first LNP2 to a show in Los Angeles in 1974. Yes. A fellow came in at the end of the show, we were dead tired, and he said, excuse me, but um, I do the audio for Jack Webb and he would very much like to see your preamplifier. Could you bring it over to him after the show? We're just too tired. So he came back again, he said, look, Mr. Webb is on the phone. Would you please talk to him? <laughs> so go out to the corridor, it's a pay phone, and hello, he says, hello, this is Jack Webb. He says, and uh, look, I, I hear you've got a hell of a preamplifier there, and uh, well, I'd like to hear it, because I, I, maybe I'd like to buy one, you know? I, I'd just like to hear it. You come out to the house and we'll put on a Frank Sinatra record because, you know, Frankie's here all the time and I know what his voice sounds like. So we'll just see if your preamplifier sounds more like his voice than, than the one I got. Okay, so he's, he has a big limousine, drive us out. We get out there, he gives us a water glass full of scotch. Here, have a drink. It's like, mm. <laughs> you know? And um, we put the LMP2 on and he just lit up and he said, I want you to build me one. And, Big leg warbed, pull your old dress tail down. Big leg warbed, pull your old dress tail down. What you feel is the sum total of everything. The musicians, the recording equipment, the production, the pressing, the source equipment, the playback equipment, the room, everything. And the measure 
of all that is if it touches your heart. If it doesn't touch your heart, it's just noise. A lot of the repertoire that's out there is so contrived and overproduced. I mean, you're talking about musicians with headphones in a glass isolation booth hearing a cue track from a console uh, operated by engineers who decide what the music is going to sound like. I mean, how can you make great music under those conditions? All in the town were still asleep When the sun came up with a shout and a leap In the lonely streets unseen People began listening more than feeling Oh, with this approach we can mix everybody in and you can hear it better But there's no feeling and It all went to the head and went away from the heart I mean, old recordings from the 1950s Everybody wants those, but, but those are made very simply. And today, all, this, all these recordings made with millions of dollars worth of equipment, nobody wants. It got too complicated. It got too disconnected from the simplicity that's associated with art. Real art is about simplicity. Real art is about touching the heart, moving the soul, and all this complexity just gets in the way. Well, he winked at all the she-dogs and bit all the he-dogs. That town never knew such a hullabaloo as that little dog raised till the end of that day. There's really two kinds of music. There is music that is made by people with an aspiration to something greater, and there is music which is made for money. Most people today are in it for the money. The whole direction went towards a very narcissistic product, which was about me, 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 and my money, my career, my fame, my, my, my. That's what I'm talking about. And, and uh, instead of what happened with the early recordings, the early recordings, People made music. They just pulled their instruments and played it because they loved it. And they, they, maybe there was a microphone or two, and that was it. And and the, the the job of the engineer was just to capture what the musicians did. That's all changed. Musicians love this feeling of joy and getting lost in the music that you had. Right? That's what it's about. The industry has built itself around an infrastructure that has systematically cut off musicians from that joy, from that getting lost in the music. And that's the real reason why these recordings are so worthless, because there's no life energy in them. There's some principle about life which says you have to grow or die if you appreciate what it means to do something at a very high level then self-development means exploring that pursuit for me what what lights me up has been certain things such as in the past making recordings and making playback equipment and being part of this field. The idea was build it and they will come. <laughs>